So hi, welcome to the Good Nights Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... Dan Briggs from Between the Bear to Me. And we're going to answer some questions today. I'm going to start. Uh, so congrats on your upcoming album, Colors 2. How do you feel about the response to it so far? Uh, feels good. Um, I feel like people have heard just such a such a small micro amount of it. I don't know if you guys have heard the record. We did, yeah. We did, it's, yeah. Uh, it, it's a garga- gargantuan undertaking. And um, to be able to encompass the full dynamic and, uh, you know, thematic undertaking that, that it is musically in two songs is, is virtually impossible. So I'm glad that people have responded um, positively so far. And I just feel like it, hopefully it will only get better when, when they dive deeper. <laughs> that album had me up for an hour and a half last night listening to the entire thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is there any meaning behind the album name or cover art? Uh well, you know, it's it's obvious it's a it's a play, it's a continuation of uh an album we put out in 2007 called mm-hmm. Colors. And um the idea at that time back in 2006 we did a um uh, a long defunct tour called Ozfest. Uh, uh-huh. that has not been around for many years now and uh, i think we did the second and last year of it as a traveling festival and um that summer was just you know it it kind of it really like broke us down um and we were at the end of a long touring cycle it was the first full like you know album touring cycle with this lineup 2005 2006 and um you know, it was really that we were wanting to break out and just burst our, our brains open and, mm-hmm. um, you know, just kind of unleash the floodgates creatively and really propel ourselves kind of from, from where we were. And, you know, um, and the name Colors came from that embodiment that was the song White Walls, the last song on Colors, was all about Tommy wrote about that idea, that kind of experience that we had that summer Hmm. that kind of fueled the thing. And so the name colors was kind of born from the idea of the white walls and, you know, coloring it in as it were. And uh, yeah, so this is, uh, this is kind of checking, checking back in um, with that idea, that ethos um, that we established back in 2006, 2007, when we were writing and um approaching it with the band that we are now we've released like i don't seven or something records since then Mm -hmm. um and grown a lot you know i was 22 i think when that record came out 36 now so it's just yeah we've we've grown a lot and it's, it's amazing that we've been able to exist as long as a band to where we could check back in with it um 13, 14 years later, um, because not a lot of bands get that, that opportunity. So what made you guys check in on it at all? And how did you know that like, this was the time to make a second one? The idea came up while we were still touring on Automata, um, you know, maybe 2018, 2019 at some point. And we had done basically our touring before the Automata album had started uh with a 10-year colors anniversary tour so that would have been the fall of 2017 and um you know we we'd known that album was a special one with our fans and for us as far as you know like i was saying earlier like a turning point creatively and stuff and um but it was you know i think really doing that tour um that we were just like you know like this is this is kind of bonkers this is kind of like more than than we even expected um which was great and um and it was fun to to then you know dig into the music that we had then written that last year on automata and this and that and uh, i think the idea was just kind of floating around back there you know just kind of like what would it be like now that it's been all these years you know um to, to you know dive back into you know there's there, there's some musical themes from the original record that um are carried over 
and um, and to be able to explore them as the musicians that we are now. And since this album is such a fan favorite, did you guys have any pressure kind of going into making like an extension of it? And if so, how'd you deal with that pressure? No, we've always just written what what feels uh, right and natural. And that's, I think, what's kind of led to, you know, a, a natural sort of progression over the years. If you look at the first record we did as, as the quintet we are and have been for 16 years or whatever, um, starting with Alaska to Automata and then leading into Colors too, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a journey, but it was always what was natural at the time. I remember saying, you know, when, when we were pushing Automata and Coma Ecliptic that like, you know, those were probably records that we wanted to make back in 2005. But at that time, just, we just wouldn't naturally have been able to make them, you know, mm -hmm. it been really like forcing an agenda, forcing that idea. And everything's just, just always happened naturally. And um, that's, uh, that's the main thing, you know? I think if we were trying to write music that people wanted to hear or whatever, we'd be in a much different business. <laughs> and so we just write music for ourselves and we're fucking weirdos, so. Fair enough. Fair, yeah. uh, so can you tell me a little about your writing process for this album? That was weird because um, we're, we're also writing through this pandemic. So we, we, we did before we were touring all the way up to uh, last March, we were in South America um, when when things were starting to shut down back home. So that mm -hmm. wasn't great mm -hmm. um, being away. But, you know, thankfully, we were able to get home literally like mid month. I remember we were in uh, Chile and I was watching basketball. We had a day off. I was all excited. I had all these vegan empanadas. I was just I was going nuts in this hotel room watching basketball. And then they cut back in and they were just like you know, there's a case that spread, you know, in one of the teams and the NBA is going to be shutting down and you're just like, oh my God, is this real? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it started, you know, our, our next show in Argentina, uh, Argentina closed their borders. So we were just like, oh my God. Um, so that kind of propelled <laughs> what became the writing, you know, and, and the last year and a half for, for everyone, which, which has just been weird for everyone. But for us, you know, uh we don't all live in north carolina anymore three of us live here me and blake and paul and our guitarist dusty lives in nashville and our singer tommy lives in california so um you know usually at least when we're writing even though we do so much individually at home as far as just starting ideas from the ground up and getting songs going and stuff there's always a bit of arranging or just like yeah th th there's just this this unexplained unexpected sort of magic that happens when you're working on an album and you're in the same room together even if we're not a band that jams out ideas or whatever mm -hmm. where someone will just hear something or you'll be having a conversation and just an idea sparks you know and uh this album just didn't have that we everything was done remotely um we were extra cautious not only because i mean we were writing it last summer into the fall um but also you know our, our drummer's wife was pregnant there's just like all this extra stuff so we're just no one was like trying to push anything you know mm -hmm. yeah uh try to try to do anything like normal um and so you know we did a stream last i think august of automata and that was the first time we'd been in the room together since march and then we weren't in the room again until november when we were in the studio so Super weird. Lots Super of time weird. Yeah. Part. Yeah, I, I, I think you know it's it's good. You know, I I, I know we 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 had um a short little like video compilation that came out of us in the studio. You know, and even just seeing that now, you know, um, you know everyone masked up and you know a lot of our promo photos. Um, you know, and and I put out a record in April that was with another group that we recorded last August, you know, and I look at all the photos and everyone's all messed up and it's, it's, it's always going to be a very interesting um, document of mm -hmm. time that, that hopefully ends. I don't know. Maybe, maybe masks are a part of our life forever. No, I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or, and I just feel like we're like, 
we're gonna be extra super duper careful but you know i guess it's okay to play gigs so we're doing it you know yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. better jump on that before everything gets closed down again <laughs> All right, doomsday over there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, obviously, we've had those conversations, you know what I mean, about how we're going to operate. Because the Foo Fighters had to cancel a gig mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago because someone in their camp that was vaccinated got it, you know. And um, yeah. and I just, yeah, I just, it, 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 who knows? But yeah. Mm-hmm. I hope it doesn't close down again. I, yeah. I wasn't trying to wish any bad on you. I'm just trying to no, be cautious. Yeah. Those, those thoughts are there. And oh my God, because I don't know if you've like if, if you saw like like what the tour that we're preparing for that we start rehearsals for on friday which is very soon um Ooh. not lately getting those like not even anxiety dreams it's just like your brain's turned on and you're like oh god i gotta get that cable i gotta do that thing mm-hmm. box how do i go on tour again yeah but yeah it's just it's just it's so much that we're prepping for two and a half hours of music and uh two sets that yeah, there's just so much more going into it that you can't go into it with anything but positive vibes. And like, mm-hmm. just, we've done an insane amount of work. And yeah, it's definitely an ambitious tour to go on after sitting on your ass for the last year and a half at home, yeah. pretty much. It, it's interesting. I've had conversations with friends and, and family about that. That you know, usually when if this were normal time and we'd just you know taken a good chunk off. Uh, to write and record a record there is always that thing where it's like oh yeah how do I go on tour again how do I do that but now it's even that thing of like like I live alone so it's like how do I be on a bus with 10 people again mm-hmm. yeah how do I be in a room with a thousand people yeah it's know? a jump <laughs> forgotten how to socialize almost <laughs> yeah I mean you know it's been nice since you know the, the last handful of months that I've been vaccinated to just be out a bit um and and be social and, and you know in a way and I went to go see like a, a friend's record release show the other night which was really nice but mm-hmm. um, yeah I don't know you know it's I'm I'm sure it'll just snap back in it's just like when I sat down to start relearning music even that alone just seemed like such a monumental task um, and then it just as soon as I started in and was like a couple songs in I was like oh yeah this is what we do mm-hmm. yeah. You can't like unlearn something like that. Mm-hmm. So, again, we're celebrating 21 years as a band or whatever. So, like, yeah, this is our whole adult. <laughs> I think we remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, how did the track list come about for this record? Did you write the opener to be an opener, closer to be closer? And what inspired you to end the album off with a 12 minute track? Well, definitely the closer. Uh, with the last thing that we worked on Um, and you know it's different for every record some of them you start in like I remember when we did the coma ecliptic record when we were charting out we always have like a marker board when we're working and we just start placing demos and some there are some that you know um, are going into one or coming out of another Mm -hmm. and I remember before we started working we literally had them sketched out and there was a little space you know later in the record where we're like this, something's going to happen here and we're not quite sure yet. And that was a very interesting way to work because um, you could just kind of go through it and and, uh, and and iron everything out and fill in where you needed. Uh, the original Colors record was written from the middle out and then going mm. back to the beginning in, uh, which was really interesting uh, just because of how we started. You know, we didn't know that we were starting in the middle of the record. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, with this one, um there was so much material like by the time that we were getting towards gosh maybe like august like the end of summer um that there were a few different sketches of kind of what the record was going to be and and when it kind of like got whittled into what it is now there was a very central kind of core um of the album that very purposefully you know was flown into each other and 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 i think if if you look and, and, and are listening, you'll get that because it, it, there's a few passages, a um, few songs that are changing that that if you're not looking at your stereo, you might not super realize mm-hmm. um, that it's a different track and not just the same track. And that that that's kind of the vibe with the original colors had too. Um, uh, but that being said, I think all these tracks can be stopped and started uh, actually better than the original colors. Some of so, some of the 
like if we want to play ants of the sky from the first colors record out of out of context it's um because it starts so abruptly out of another song we always kind of mm-hmm. have to put thinking caps and be like so do we do the end of the song before it or do we write a thing to come in or do we just start in after the initial blurb um so yeah sequencing is always kind of fun and interesting because that can uh, it, it can happen depending on the material that you have at different points of the process. And sometimes it's so nice to have a map and be like, oh, we just have to fill in this space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I love that even even on a song to song when you're arranging and I'll do this a lot where I, where I actually chart out, you know, a name with a, of a part with arrows going to the next part, the next part, and then where it's finally trying to end up. And being able to just physically see where you're going, where you're coming from, you know, maybe the keys that the parts are in um, or being like, okay, so the the first chunk was kind of laid out, you know, with these two parts and then a chorus. And then we came here, you know, if we can kind of mirror that, but in a different way and then get back here. It's it's all a weird puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. You do X number of records if this is our 10th album. Um, you get a handle on it, but again, we're always trying to do something different. So, mm-hmm. you know, that there might be some songs that have a little bit more of a typical structure, and then um, ones like uh, "The Future Is Behind Us" that just takes a veer and just goes in that direction. And I like doing that too. We've 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 experimented with that over the years of of having what feels like a song, and then you get to a point where it's just like. And it just goes totally in another direction, which yeah. I think it's fun. Yeah. Keeps it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what song off this album took longest to write and which one is your personal favorite? Um, I th- oh, gosh, uh, I think the chunk of, um, you know, prehistory to bad habits to future is behind us. Um, is some of my favorite stuff. I mean, it's such a, it really has the full dynamic spread, but feels new, um, touches on some ideas from uh, that chunk, especially from the original colors, um, but is kind of, you know, takes those ideas and and really draws them out over a whole tune, um, like prehistory, plays off of the idea of like there was a bluegrass part on the first colors record mm-hmm. uh and and in that song in answer the sky the bluegrass section is basically like um a rendition of the chorus just done you know uh in 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 a fun bluegrass fashion and um on that song prehistory we just we just kind of took that just literal like you know bluegrassy idea was just kind of like oh if we did that for a full song you know if we had just a full full song that was kind of like a full-on like progressive kind of bluegrass tinged um high energy like that's it's it's a very quick you mm-hmm. know because a lot of that song's in 16th notes and it moves really quick on the instruments it's like that sort of thing that just keeps your heart pounding yeah yeah um uh, while largely staying in four, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting off. I'm getting too. Oh no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> but but you're fine. It's, uh, that that was a really fun thing. And then the idea in um in uh, bad habits again kind of comes from a solo section in Answer the Sky, which uh, has a shuffle part in the middle of it. Uh, and and it was again, it was just that idea of like, well, if we had a whole song that just had you know this kind of shuffle, da 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 feel to it. Um, what would what would that be like and that's that's again that's just that's taken an old idea that we played around with and that that was so new to us at the time in 2007 and just expanding on it um as the kind of musicians we are now um i really love that stretch and and i i think um yeah i think there's just some really interesting stuff in there i can't remember if there's another part of the question (laughs) oh that that was it what was the longest or the hardest to write yeah, which one took the longest to write? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, let me think real quick because um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think which one might have had the most back and forth thing. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, oh shit. Um, 
I think that the, 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 the last one actually didn't, uh, human as hell didn't have, um, it's obviously it's a, it's a, it's such a long track. Mm-hmm. Um, there wasn't a ton of back and forth and it actually probably came together in like three or four back and forths. Oh, wow. um, but I remember, and I remember that being the last piece you were pretty well drained, you know, at that point, I don't even think I'd started working on my bass parts. I was just like, so focused with my guitar and keys as we were writing, you know, just trying to get the compositions done. Mm. And, um, I just, I just remember spending a lot of time at, in front of the, the, the computer, sending stuff back and forth, uh, for like, you know, just like a week straight of, um, long 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 days that i mean and, and obviously it makes sense because it's such a long song um but again that's one like we were talking about that once you could see the the phrase that starts the song ends the song happens in the middle of the song before there's a dynamic shift into a a, a, a lower calm dynamic um once you had those those uh those benchmark posts mm-hmm. and how it was going to kind of lay out it was really kind of filling in um and being able to see the song, you know, I always like to be able to step back and just be like, oh, shit, there it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can sometimes be hard when you're in the middle of a 15 minute long burst of insanity. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is that how you guys write or at least how you write? You like see there's certain points and then you have to fill in those blanks. It can be like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, but yeah generally there's like there's um everyone's got kind of a a a different process and writes differently you know tommy tommy can write in really small chunks or sometimes like um like a a general like verse idea in a chorus um industrial writing small chunks and um blake came in actually with a couple like like fix the air you know, larger kind of ideas that, that, that we could, we could work around and fill in. And then Paul and I write in these, these large, these large chunks um, that are more, you know, kind of fleshed out song sort of things um, that then everyone can kind of dig into and feel around. But generally there's kind of like a pass off vibe where it's like, okay, I've gotten to this point, you You know, now I'm going to pass it off. And, um, and if there's just if someone's just got a very specific uh, vision or idea, you know, it's it's not a forced thing, and it's it's helping a thing just ride smoothly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it just keeps going. It just you know, it keeps the the idea just keeps spreading. You know, until until it's passed off. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes it's that that song is heard is kind of like oh shit, that's kind of like a done song. Like we just need to do our parts or fill in or, Oh, let, let's change. What, what if we like added a beat here to like make the transition flow a little better and those small things. And, and, and that can be super fun, you know, uh, revolution and limbo. The song we just released was one that was like that, where, uh, where Paul had like the majority of that all chunked out. And then uh, we were just able to go in and just, just fine tune a little here during the Latin section. You know, I added a B part to like what he did and Blake added some little flourishes here and there. Yeah. Uh, and everyone kind of touched in, but it was generally, we had like a full thing to kind of work off of. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, when it's something like that, you can just listen. And it's just, as soon as your ear like pops up that you're like, Oh, what was, you know, what's that? Or, or, Oh, that, that makes me think of this, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. that's kind of fun. So there, there, there's so many different ways actually that these songs come to be. I love it. Wow. A lot of different processes. Definitely. Yeah. It is, but you write music together for, you know, 16 years uh you kind of get the ticks you know as as something comes in or you know like i i don't think the guys are too put off if um you know if someone sends something that's literally like you know a a a four bar riff repeated four times that they're like oh i get that you know i i I can get what to do with that or if you know if i send like a 10 minute long song you know send someone just like oh yeah like this is not foreign to us like we know we know how to take this in Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that's cool. right. to it. Uh, so, can you tell me where your headspace was at while you were creating this record? It's hard to jump back, to be honest, because I mm-hmm. feel like 
this whole last year, like if I look at from last summer to right now, it's just been like a wave of like up and down and like yeah. mentally just, just all over the place. Uh, I was doing a lot creatively last summer, fall into the beginning of the year. Um, and I kind of hit, uh, I hit a wall, not as far as like, I, I, couldn't be creative anymore but I just was like I think I've just done so fucking much and I have to stop about around like March April of this year where I was just like holy hell I'm like and you know I had like a little mental health dip because I was just like well what else is there what else am I doing you know Mm -hmm. um but when we were in the middle of it and writing you know it was generally like very exciting you wake up have your coffee like I'm having right now and then just go right upstairs like it's very much like you're you're clocking in. And mm-hmm. I try to approach my days like that. Now it's shifted where I'm doing that same thing, but it's just rehearsing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have my coffee, go upstairs, warm up for about 20 minutes watching videos. And then I press play on iTunes. I take a break an hour in, walk around outside, come back in for another hour and some. And then, uh, you know, try to form myself back together and go about my day. So. All yeah right. wow that's really cool i i like how you just have a, a set schedule of what you're supposed to do to you know warm up it, you watch a couple of videos and then you actually get into that headspace of okay so i need to start working on this riff and you absolutely. just go do it and then you go take a break go walk yeah. outside i just i love that it's amazing it's it, not just like rolling out of bed and just like oh god i gotta go do this again oh, yeah. yeah it helps to keep to keep a, a normal thing. And I've, I've just had that sort of thing my whole adult life. I'm, I'm just, I'm just a freak. I'm always working on something upstairs. So mm-hmm. it's um staying like that helps a lot. And also I'm much more of like a morning person. Uh, uh, it's very rare that I like work through the day, make dinner. And then I'm like creatively excited enough and not spent that I go back upstairs. It happens, but not, not often. How do you recommend that your fans listen to the record for the first time in the car with friends in the dark with headphones on? Oh. Well, you know, I would normally say, you know, wait, get, get, get the record, the, the, the vinyl and put it on and have that experience. But because it is this album that flows so much, um, you know, and it's, it's four sides of an album, you know, there, there are the, all these breaks. So yeah, I, I would actually, you know, uh, I don't know if it's bad to say, but I, I would put it on, you know, either on, you know, if you have the CD or on, on your, your streamy and just be able to take it all in. You know, I, I think it's maybe a spoil to say how long it is right now. Cause I don't think that has been released exactly how long it is, but yeah, it's going to take up a chunk of your night mm-hmm. and um, yeah, maybe, maybe light some candles and <laughs> yeah. Take it in, you know, uh, schedule a bathroom break if you need or just go beforehand so you can just stay put like you're going to see a movie or something and take it all in. And then you're going to have, um, you know, like you were saying that 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 you 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 were up last night, you know, with it like mm-hmm. it's you know, it might there, there might be a lot floating around in your brain and, and it demands re-listens, you know, and my favorite mm-hmm. music and movies are like that. You know, if if I have fully taken something in on the first listen and I'm like, oh, I'm good, yeah. you know, that you know, that might not speak to how much replay there is going to be, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Nah, man. Uh, come see us. Come see us on tour if we're coming near you, um, which if you're in America, there's a good chance we are because we're going to be out for about seven weeks. So we're going all over and um, we're playing stuff off just every record i mean it's two and a half hours of music it's nuts i'm playing yeah. misdirect and full great misdirect and full so yeah it's don't miss it because it won't happen again <laughs> all, right. all right well thank you for now this has been dan briggs yeah. from between the buried and me and we've been the good noise podcast